Let me just say, before I start this video, before I go into any of the details, if any of this stuff is true, then there is the potential for some spoilers for Resident Evil 8. If you don't want any of that, so there's also spoilers for maybe Resident Evil 7 as well, if you haven't finished that game yet. Look away if you don't want to be spoiled for Resident Evil 8, even though I don't think there's anything here that will... I think it's more stuff that raises questions about Resident Evil 8 rather than spoils things, in my personal opinion. However, if you want to go in completely clean, then, you know, don't watch this video. Okay, that's the disclaimer. Out of the way, gone. Hey there, lads and ladies. It is Petrifying Pumpkins here, and welcome back to the channel once again. Today, I want to talk about some more Resident Evil 8 rumors. We had a couple of these a few months ago. Apparently, there's been a new wave of testing. So these people who are testing, they're in this thing called the Ambassador Program for Capcom. Allegedly, they've been coming, they've been leaking information to websites like this, these ones I'm going to talk about now in a second. And they've been just further leaking more details that we want to know about Resident Evil 8, which, fingers crossed, will have PS viewer support of some kind. So the first website I want to talk about is called biohazarddeclassified.com. Now these guys are basically just a fan site for Resident Evil, so they're not exactly, you know, an official authority when it comes to these things. Having said that, people playing these games, people playing these demos and secretly have been allegedly leaking emails to these guys so that they can make articles about them. So I'm just going to scroll down here, and according to the author here, who was named as Derek, according to him, they've been getting emails. He classifies this as highly plausible. The first thing to note is the title. So the previous leak did say that it would be Resident Evil Ace, but that the 8 wouldn't be there. It would be a clever title. And so here, as you can see in the image, this lines up. It's Resident Evil. The subtitle is Village. But as you can see, the VI and LL in village, you know, they've been highlighted in such a way that they look like the Roman numerals for the number A's. So, you know, Resident Evil A's. So that's the clever title part, and that does line up. Keep in mind, someone could fake that, you know, it's not, it's not beyond the imagination of anyone to come up with something like this, so it is possibly fake. But still, so far, so good. It lines up with what we've been hearing. So the next part to talk about then is the witch, who's apparently a character who's going to be following Ethan throughout the game. And yes, Ethan is the main character. That's you, the protagonist. So according to this, the witch is going to be similar to Marguerite in the way that she operates with insects. Apparently, when you defeat her or when you shoot her a certain amount of times, she like dissolves into insects. She also has a unique laugh that's going to let you know when she's in the area. So I'm really excited to see what this kind of... I feel like this witch could be, you know, a really terrifying presence, especially in virtual reality. Marguerite was easily the scariest part for me of Resident Evil 7. Uh, so I hope the witch is like an even more intense Marguerite that kind of haunts you for a longer period of the game rather than that just one specific area that Marguerite was in. So the next part that the leaker wants to talk about is Chris. So yeah, basically Chris Redfield been in the Resident Evil series throughout, you know, many entries. One, he was in five, he was probably in some others as well. He was in seven at the end, obviously, the DLC as well. He, he made an appearance there too. And according to the leaker, he's going to play an integral part in Ace. He appears in flashbacks surrounding Ethan, Mia, and apparently their baby. So of course, Ethan and Mia, two big characters in Resident Evil 7. Ethan escaped, there was two possible endings. One where you escape with Mia, or one where she dies. So it looks like the one where you escape with Mia seems to be canon if you can heed that. And they've gone on to either have a baby or get pregnant or something like that. So that's what I mean when I say this kind of raises questions. So it appears that in a flashback sequence, Chris can be seen shooting one of them while breaking into their home. So this seems like not the Chris Redfield maybe we're expecting. He's, he appears to be doing something like awful here in the intro of the game in this flashback sequence. Of course, I'm sure not everything's going to be as it seems. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit further in the video. So some other details is that the game will take place in a European setting, which of course the previous leaks also suggested that was the case. It was going to feel have like a Resident Evil 4 feel, which of course was took place somewhere in Spain. Also, as of this time, it appears the first person's perspective will be returning. That's the news I wanted to hear. That's the stuff that's going to make us PS Viewer owners, like, you know, super excited about this. Now, it's not a guarantee that PS Viewer support will be included, but it is a step in the right direction. Now, I should say right now that the leakers, none of the leakers have mentioned Viewer once. However, if you've gone back to the Resident Evil 7 demos and stuff like that, they released in flat versions first. There was no way to play the demos in virtual reality until later on, closer to launch, they patched viewer support in if, I, if i'm remembering correctly i think i am so just because these guys aren't playing virtual reality versions in these demos doesn't mean they're not being worked on behind the scenes so fingers crossed for that the leaker has also noticed interestingly that the game is slated for quarter one of 2021 which is not that far away of course 
Now, we all know there's a crazy virus plaguing the world right now. It's like a plot from Resident Evil itself. So that could be pushed as a result, so we'll have to wait and see. But with that in mind, it seems like a lot of the game must be developed already at this stage. So next, the leaker talks a little bit about the user interface for the game. And he says that they're testing both the Resident Evil 7 style with a Resident Evil 4 style. So if you can remember Resident Evil 4, you had those attache cases. You had to fit the items into certain blocks. It wasn't just popping us into a block like it is in 7. You had to organize it so that they'd fit. It was kind of like Tetris, a little bit. It was almost like a little mini game in and of itself. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm kind of indifferent about it. I don't mind too much. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The leaker says that another strange element of Resident Evil 8 is going to be a heavy emphasis on hallucinations. Now this hallucination stuff was taken from Resident Evil 3.5. If you don't know what Resident Evil 3.5 is, Basically, before Resident Evil 4 came out, there was a bunch of demos and a bunch of like concepts and stuff like that that were basically a different game to what Resident Evil 4 turned out to be. Resident Evil 4 became more, much more action-packed, had a different look to it. Like Resident Evil 3.5 had a lot of stuff in it that never made it into 4. And basically hallucinations seem to be one of those things and now they're bringing them back. So these hallucinations will likely make it hard for you to discern what's real and what isn't and more importantly, who to trust. So they're gonna have like huge story amplifications. If you take the hallucinations in mind, take it back to the flashback that, that apparently Ethan gets of Chris breaking into his home and shooting, then you can kind of see that that's probably not gonna be the case. I'm sure Chris is still gonna be a good guy. He's not gonna just become evil. I'm sure the hallucinations or whatever is causing the hallucinations will will be responsible for that if I had to speculate. So next, I wanna move on over to relyonhorror.com. Now these guys, they previously reported on those Silent Hill rumors that were coming to PSVR, which have since been half debunked by Konami, like people are not too sure if that's real, if that's still going ahead or not. Konami maybe weren't going to confirm it anyway. But a lot of what Rely on Horror are getting kind of backs up what Biohazard uh, declassified or saying to kind of work together, if you know what I mean, to make a bigger picture. Plus this was retweeted by a user on Twitter called Mybel. That guy's kind of reliable enough, I would say. He's well known in the industry. So a lot of the information that relyonhorror.com have is pretty much the same as what we've already talked about. So I'm just gonna skip on to the stuff that might be a little bit different or might like shed more light on what we've already been talking about. So apparently, according to these guys, there's different demos being shown and these demos have differences in them in terms of what happens in the demo, in terms of story, how they end and stuff like that. They speculate the reason for this might be for Capcom to narrow down maybe who's leaking these demos or it could be just, you know, a different version and they're going to see which plays out best and then they'll go with that one. So for example, some of the tests say that Mia Winters is pregnant while others say the child has already been born. So it's these little differences like that that are, you know, making me question what's going on in the story. So Ethan is once again the lead protagonist and according to this he's going to be an Ash Williams type and Ash Williams wasn't really serious or anything like that. He kind of brought comedy to us so, so I wonder if this is going to have a bit of lightheartedness to it in terms of like one-liners and stuff like that. Now that Ethan he's been hardened, he's been through us, now he's going to be maybe a badass Ash Williams type dude. We'll have to wait and see. So you might remember with the earlier leaks that there was talk of wolves creatures or werewolves and according to this the wolf life creatures reported in earlier leaks have been described as something akin to beast men and that in one version of the demo there's an escape sequence where your your weapons are you either don't have weapons or the weapons you have are completely ineffective against them so you're forced to run and hide according to the leaker these beast men the shotgun is more effective towards them plus they are somewhat bullet spongy so perhaps we'll be doing more running than actually fighting these guys in the interest of saving you know our resources and stuff like that so again the game is massively inspired by a combination of resident evil 4 and the much beloved resident evil 3.5 the game has an obvious focus on something more supernatural and this guy speculates that it's going to be due to viral induced hallucinations and that all kind of lines up so they can go crazy with their werewolves they can go crazy with witches and all this kind of stuff and at the end of the day it's just a virus fucking with your head. So the leaders of these beast men appear to be a stalker type woman that resembles a witch who haunts Ethan during the demo and a massive gorilla-like monster man with chains and a staff. So I'm kind of visualizing something very similar to Resident Evil 4 where the villagers were just like, you know, they had like, it felt like a cult. It was very cultish. Uh, apparently these guys got leaders, the witch and the gorilla man with the staff. These kind of sound like cult leaders to me, maybe. I'm sure when the virus wears off and the hallucinations drop off, they're probably just normal humans, if I had to guess. So at the bottom of the article then it says, of course, it's recommended that you continue to take all this information with a grain of salt. And I recommend we all do that now as well. Although the dead on similarities between all reports 
including one from a leaker who gave us good reason to trust completely, seems to indicate otherwise. There you have it, you know, we're starting to see a bit more light being shed on the new Resident Evil Ace. The big question now is, is this going to have PS viewer support? We know it's kind of continuing from Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7, of course, did have viewer support and it was kind of successful. From all the reports we've been hearing, it sounded like Capcom were happy with the number of people who played that game in virtual reality. We know now, if these rumors are to be believed, that Resident Evil Ace is going to continue on the first person perspective. And if you ask me, that means that viewer is more likely. Personally speaking, first person makes a lot more sense for a horror game than third person. So like people thinking with Resident Evil 2 remake, Resident Evil 3 remake, that maybe Capcom have abandoned virtual reality because that's not in those games. I just think that virtual reality wouldn't have fit those games in third person as well as it would have first person. And you want to build your game around that, not just slap it in and have it be, you know, shy so that's it for this video lads and ladies thank you for watching but before i go let me give a huge thank you to my patreon supporters whose names are on the screen now thanks to their support i can dedicate more time to this channel and also let me give a particularly huge shout out to pete hawkins crumb tradition and columbus thomas the third for their support on the top tier of patreon if you want to support over on patreon too the link will be in the description below but if you don't want to do that, I will just as happily accept likes and subscribes and shares and all that good stuff. One last thing before I go, go check out Decepticon.com. Thank you very much for letting me use your music in all my videos. So go check him out over on, in the link below in the description or over on Spotify or whatever it is you listen on. That is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Stay moist.